Number two here. Um, I think I have everything set up. Hopefully, uh, we don't have to draft dodge. No, I think we should be good. But either way, we can get into uh, our next game, and it's going to be Battlefield of Eternity. Now, so we talked, you know, race-wise, you know, we can talk about some some tanks overall, but, like, when it comes to the push, like, push and defense is such a weird, weird posture, because some teams will draft, but, like, we'll win the race, and we don't have really anything beyond that. Yeah. And then there's some teams who draft where, like, we've got Siege, but our race is really weak, and, like, yeah. it's interesting to see the dynamic and the flex between those two. Do you hard go into control? Do you hard go into race? Do you go into a dive comp? Do you go into a Siege comp? Like, it's, it's, and then how do you mix those things up so that way you're not just kind of pigeonholed into one thing i think like this is the one map one of the few there there there's like i think towers of doom similar but like this is a map where if you have like a very strong split pusher it's not actually that good because yeah the value that you'll get from splitting gets kind of nilled by the fact that the opponent will then get a full immortal and like the one for one there is in most cases like severe right like you're, you're just not it's not a good trade so like you typically don't see people take characters outside of stuff like sylvanas the obvious right yeah uh, to the, to kind of increase their push but yeah you know, it's not that, like we see lost vikings here or anything more. no it's not yeah like they're splitting with vikings and racing with four or anything like that it's, it's just people have tried things like that yeah right? uh, you definitely can you know that i will say that this was a map where we took abathur a lot back when we when i was on heroes earth uh and I, I actually think that that worked out really well but we drafted on the basis that we would draft a f very strong defensive four man that was hyper mobile and mm -hmm. our intention was to do everything to keep the enemy from not racing so that we could poke and by that i mean like we took things like genji zeratul tracer like that was our comp with an avatar <laughs> so it's like mm -hmm. the other team's just playing tag while we're walking in hitting their immortal a little bit and then backing up and then if they choose to full race we'll in most cases win um true so, so like there are strategies to the map that you can play that aren't like just draft a five strong five man um but i doubt we'll see it here you know these teams are obviously just kind of randomized each week and we already have a winner uh as gray man has selected they're for team archon now, so that's going to be a gg do you know what's wild to me is the is the fall off of hanzo on battlefield of attorney and how the slight adjustment to one talent did that because i like uh never outmatched where you no longer get auto you never longer get cooldown reduction on your uh scatter arrow from auto attacks you get you have to auto attack into an enemy hero when oh, that change right. happened yeah. when that change happened hanza went from like first pick first ban on battlefield to just hey, they're there if you have a good hanzo player like honest mm -hmm. to god like rainer and then rainer was like kind of started coming back and then they buffed every single one of his level ones like two months ago and so they were just like well now rainer's picked because even if you go ace in the hole you still are getting insane value yeah. so yeah I, the race between these two teams, I will say, is like Grey Main, yeah, is going to offer a lot of good race, good dive, good blow up potential, but Rainer does have penetrating round. They've got the ETC also for a little bit of control as well on the side of Black Hole. So maybe they can mitigate that, that Grey Main dive, maybe utilizing the, uh, the face melt to push them back or maybe penetrating round, sleep dark to maybe put them, uh, you know, uh, put them. Put them to sleep for a couple seconds. Yeah, yeah could put them down. The word sleep. <laughs> I, I could think, I could think of tranquilizer dart, but I couldn't think of the word sleep for a second. Dear Lord. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's just one of those things. Like, I think they've got good defensive tools, and I was wondering if Archon goes into the aggression. I was wondering, do they go into maybe an Anubrak and dive into the back line? But then they're going to be going to this Janna, which it's a strong anchor. Blinds are really powerful, so I, I get the shift as well. But I was thinking, it's like, maybe a Anubrak, maybe it's possible for Greymane and that Malthio, but still. I'm not going to lie. I'm, like, pretty depressed about the Malthio pick. Um, it's just super early. It gets counterpicked oh, it... now, and, what like, what, what are they flexing on fifth pick? Uh, like here you go, like they oh. take... yeah. so like now the Matthew is just gonna have a really sad time existing. He's got a Stukov behind him who can't cleanse. Um, I, yeah, and and like, what's your flex? Like, what was this flex? Like, what what are they trying to hide murky. away here? Murky, murky. Obviously, this is a hundred percent murky pick yeah, right here. Yeah, just give Alarak. You, you, I mean, this is. This is this is the standard murky build. You obviously have a have no. I have no it idea. It could be an Abba. It could be an Abather. Um, 
That's risky. There you go, Hanzo. They go into more. They go into more race. Yeah, potential. couldn't they just take Joe Hanzo and then just like then we last picked a Matthew, you... right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Chad I don't know saying what which not a lot of these teams run double support, but I mean a Kerosene hit wouldn't be bad. You can go into you can go into Iron Fist and just and just punch you. you block totem's not bad. Um, yeah, no, like Kerosene could have been a good option, but Hanzo does give them some some poke. You have I. I doubt we get it, but we could see a dragon strike if we wanted to have the memes here. But realistically, it's probably dragon arrow and then, you know, bless shield follow up or set up, you know, beforehand or something like that. I don't know. It's um, it's going to be a lot on the gray main mouth here. I don't know about you. What, what do you what are you seeing? Yeah, it, I, I mean, the whole game is going to come down to the gray main. I, I want to see him go Quicksilver bullet so he can gap at least. Uh, he's got to do his best to not get comboed by Alarak, which is obviously fairly difficult considering there's an ETC slide that's like right in front of the Alarak combo. Um, it's, it's just going to come down to positioning and I think the race positioning is also going to be very important in this game. Obviously Alarak loves to defend, but we're jumping into this game and we have Team Black Hole here on the left side. Going to have Trimmer on the ETC, Centurion on that Alarak, Frosty went on Iana, Carbon, a Rock and the Rainer, and I believe up in the top lane we have Vespertine on the row. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Archon up one in our best of five series. Valimar will be on the mouthfield. Down in the bottom lane, we're going to be having Chichegi on the Joanna. We've got Unaverted on the Hanzo. Weird Day was going to be on that Stukoff and Tiger JK on our gray main. Let's see what we have here in our bottom lane engagement. We do also, to note, have Exterminator for that Rainer. So 100, excuse me, 75 basic attack damage to, or increased basic attack damage to minions, mercenaries, and monsters, and while inspired, it's 125. So before it was actually 50 and 100, and that's when we are talking about when they had those slight buffs to Raynor, albeit slight in a sense, but yeah, no, they they, they buffed they that one pretty. right there. <laughs> yeah, there, there were some heavy handed adjustments, but hey, it, it doesn't seem like it's, it's uh, going away anytime soon, at least uh, not in the PTR patch, but holding down bottom lane on the side of uh, Archon at the time being, but Power Slide's gonna come out and they're looking for a big blow up on the Tiger JK. Plus will spread around, where your day trying to heal them up does get the uh, or does get the trait ticked right there and they're able to go ahead and keep Tiger JK alive and unaverted gets pulled in, but they stay alive as well. Already at five out of the 20 stacks on the simple geometry at level one. So it was actually really disciplined by Weary Day there. Um, he, he didn't pop his heal. Kills, kills um, through the through the through the anti heal, yes. Um, so he waited until the anti heal fell off, and then he popped it. Like some some healers would just throw the Q and then immediately pop, but he was very uh, controlled about it. But yeah, th this early game is definitely going to be favored towards Team uh, Black Hole. They're just going to be able to combo pretty much willy nilly because uh, there's not much threat onto them. And and I think what Archon's doing in response is correct, right? They're, they're playing off of this quad, uh, this four man. If they can play as far away from it, that's going to be their best bet to winning this game. And again, that comes back to that statement I was talking about, about having like a ratty type character. If you have a character that can move around the map, and I guess in this case, we've now turned our quintessential gray man, the best character in the game, into now the ratty character, um, <laughs> where he's creating pressure off of the primary lane, or, you know, they might even. No, they can't. I forgot that that character has 50 armor at all times. But they do a lot of damage to Vesper team, but Hanzo in the bottom lane somehow getting caught out. I'm assuming he was trying to go up and take out those spear guys. Uh, and just got slid combo, maybe slept. Slept Alarak yeah, it, slide, it, it, something like that. Yeah, there's probably like Alarak. Game. Yeah, Alarak probably got some good telekinesis and like Discord strike and there was no... Uh, agility as Hanzo stepped up. They were probably stepping up and doing something like I do. No, they wouldn't do something like me because I'm not, they're not flat or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, stepping up to potentially like get a better angle for a scatter arrow uh, just to build up the stacks, but they are currently and still at five on that one. 105 sa uh, sadism for that Alarak, and that's all the quests and talents we have right now. Also note, we have, we do have reactive, reactive ballista spores for that Stukov, so once they do get low enough in health, they'll be able to spread that posture around. I think that's just to deal with the potential burst or dive coming out from the enemy team, just to be able to sustain the friendly team during the objective phase but speaking of we have our first one of the game here and it looks like posturing right now is a little defensive as they're looking for a potential kill on the tiger jk but tremor needs to get themselves out of here yeah tremor just took a ton of sustain there uh if he wasn't etc i would say that you know there might be an advantage coming out from archon side but he does tap the well and they end up trading about 30 percent of the immortal away 
transfer that damage onto Trimmer. Um, we'll see if they can posture to the year to the other team's immortal here. Uh, the only problem is they're so far down in damage now. They're probably just gonna trade for the 50, and then just I would assume full race actually the next half. I do think that their race is better. Uh, if there is one thing about the Alarak pick on this map, is he's terrible at doing immortals. Um, he's just very good at defending them. So mm -hmm. you really just don't want to get into a position where you're looking to... Yeah, it's essentially what they're doing right now um, as they're just not racing. Instead, they could have just taken a 50-50 race. I'm sure they would have won, and Tiger might even still do the same here. Carbon and Vesper are currently playing pinball with Malfield because there's a <laughs> penetrating round into a, a Righteous Hammer or one way or the other, but like that Malfield pinballed around and I was like, oh, they're going to live. And then nah, 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 they're dead. But first Immortal phase will be going over to the side of Black Hole as they want to put themselves up on the board here in our best of five series. Also, they're trying to claim that that first place, place prize will get themselves a little bit of that pizza money. But top lane pressure coming on in. Yorel and Malfield will be in bottom lane. Let's see what they're able to do in this top lane. Yeah, they just, they're going to be pushing in here, and we're going to probably look to see if Alarak can combo or Ana can land a sleep. Uh, ETC could even pressure in here. The Immortal, the Unstoppable is going to be crocs on this Joanna. Uh, you're all knocking her back. The slide is going to connect. The sleep connects. The Alarak combo connects. <laughs> and Juggy has been taken out of the game. Yeah. Uh, they were they were where this team is, and then they w they made it all the way to the minion wave. Like, they, <laughs> they got pushed so far in that fight. Dear Lord, but uh, that will be top lane fort going down. And here's the thing, Mac, like we often don't see full forts going down from first objective. No. That's a lot of siege coming in. Like, and yeah. this Immortal, just, it will get a couple autos in the top lane keep with, you know, Tiger JK, uh, excuse me, Vesper up here, uh, heckling Tiger JK, but Valmar and friends are looking to maybe make a play happen. We'll see what happens with Vesper if they're able to get out of there. But Hanzo apparently does go down in bottom lane. Oh, the you connect? Maybe one up. more W? No, he's going to get out. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, if we look at Team uh, Archon's like wave player, it's it's pretty raunchy. Um, pretty much only the Grayman and the Joanna W, right? If Matthew were to step up into the lane, he's just gonna combo and pull it up. Uh, and again, this is kind of all created because of the Stukov, like having no cleanse. It means yeah. that like if you're gonna fight, you need to fight, right? If Jujugi's gonna hit Unstoppable, they have to go. Uh, they can't just allow them to do exactly what they did there, where they're just going to chunk him out, or they're going to force Unstoppable and then just kill him immediately after. Man, they really have like to they have to commit to the fight, right? Maybe that's going to take the heroic from Hanzo. Maybe that's going to take a big flank from Matthew. Or maybe it's just we just never fight, right? We just try our best to never fight. Um, mm. But... Yeah, if they do the posture game against their comp, like, their comp is such a pit comp. They're just looking for, like, that one opening, and then they're just going to one-tap somebody. And, and we even saw, you know, Joanna, a fairly tanky character, just go down immediately. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're running it down, and on the note of wave player, you're talking, like, there's no hybrid build from Hanzo either. It's serrated arrows at level 4, yeah. just to get the, the extra damage and the race potential. Shield Glare will stop them and unmount them, but I think they don't really care about the kill at this point. They want to steal away the camp, putting some pressure into top lane. Malthea looking to clear and push up top lane a little bit further, find themselves 10 talents here for the friendly team. Uh, just want to quickly let everyone know we got 114 sadism on the Alarak, 18 out of the cool. 20 scatter arrows for the... Um, uh, Hanzo, also just note, it technically is actually 126 for the Alarak, but they did take Applied Force at 7, reducing Sadism by 10%, so that, that Sadism's up there. Also, we do have the uh, uh, Subdue for the Joanna, but that has not been finished yet, but they still get that 80% slow, so long as they hit two heroes. First phase, though, goes over to the side of Black Hole. So this, in my opinion, would be a pretty decent spawn, actually, for Team Archon. Uh, to be able to, you know, be in this kind of poke posture. They really want to utilize Hanzo, but Tiger is going to be caught out here from the Alarak combo. He is able to walk away, and the Hanzo arrow does connect on the ETC. Trimmer is going to be taken out by the last right, and Frosty's caught out again. The Immortal coming in to peel, though. Well timed there, and Vespertine doing his best to pressure the backline with a nano boost. He does still have this heroic up. He'll be able to keep him out of there if he does drop low. Carbon taking a lot of damage from the Hanzo, but that was a really good engage, right? They immediately engaged on the ETC engaging on to Tiger and actually Vesper team doing his best to kind of create some pressure here. He still has his heroic. It is going to be Pops Carbon in the top lane. A nice counter strike connecting on the four. Tons of damage coming out from Centurion and all that sadism I mean just pop, popped each of them for about 40% of their health, right? 
Yeah, it's uh, Alarak currently. I just wanted to look at it. Um, takedown, uh, takedowns is 12% and show of force is 14%. So they can still actually get uh, ability power from that show of force because they can still build that out. Building, I think, like three more stacks on that one. But either way, looks like they managed to force them over on the uh, right hand side as EPC joined the friendly team. And this will be Immortal a little bit beyond 50%. They dive in on Tremor. Nice space melt to push them back. Regeneration globes will be grabbed by the team, just give them a little extra healing. They look to maybe turn back into this fight, but they're actually going to. I'd say back off, go into top lane, and look for the siege in with this next immortal. This is what second one of the game, and we're pushing up into a keep front gate again. Yeah, and Dear this Lord. is this is a, actually pretty good chance. This is going to be a keep. Um, there's not much that they can do. Uh, like I said, again, their wave player is very lackluster. So Tiger's cocktail and Joanna's W is the only way. And if Joanna hits unstoppable or a good Konza error and a silence falling up, I was going to say she'll just get slid immediately once the unstoppable is down. Good shove to push Vespertine out of there. They are just getting a lot of free Immortal Pokemon, actually. So this is this is going really well for Icon. I don't think that they'll end up losing their keep unless there's a re-engage here, potentially getting a kick on to somebody with the Alarak. He is fishing. The combo doesn't miss. Here comes the here, and I think they're waiting for the Immortal to move into melee range. Once it loses that shielding, it does move into melee, and I think they can step up with that a little bit more comfortable, so they're going to do that now. Hyperion coming through, Immortal does go down. Into the back line, they're going to throw Lacerates on the Tremor, but that really doesn't get a lot of value. Moshpit comes out, that's going to connect on the three members. Tiger Chicken in the background is trying to get a kill, but they need to back out. That will be them rolling away. Unaverted is able to split from the friendly team. The damage over time will find the kill onto Greymane. That will be Malfield going down as well. A wave coming in behind them, and Joanna very low, and Hanzo also the Decker, not Decker, Kane Stuka for the defense. I'm wondering if they try and push in. They have 13 talents here advantage and 16 to 7 seconds on two of these players. Yeah, they take this keep and they I would say they back off, but ooh, maybe they find a kill here and that will be another one. Stagger dot death in favor for the members of Black Hole and Unaverted gets saved by the massive shove. That was actually unbelievable considering the Ana RNG aggroed the keep there. Um, and because of that, she was taken down just from the keep hitting her like four times over. So, had it have aggroed to any other of the characters that were diving there, she would have lived. But she caught aggro, and I think either it was Tiger or the Mathiel was on top of her and, like, was able to do enough damage with the three or four keep shots to kill her. So, a really good push. So, the keep does go down um, in favor of Team Black Hole. So, overall, they did really well. And, and I think they have a they, they do a really good job of using that URL level one to essentially negate the fact that towers exist in the game. Um, and that they can just dive underneath them willy-nilly knowing full well that it's essentially impossible for him to die. That's a giant wave that they also need to manage in this bottom lane on the side of Archon. Like, they've, they've got a mortal phase coming in. They've got even talent tiers, but their map is is really pushed. I wouldn't say really pushed back, but it's, it's just pushed back to the point where, like, they're really not in a position to get in position for the race. Now, we talked about this earlier. The race potential on the side of Black Hole is mostly within that Rainer, we would say, but their fight is fairly strong, and if they can look for these single target blips with the Salarak, who's also, just to note for anyone wondering, at 141 Sadism, um, it's going to be pretty powerful. Nice telekinesis to check the bush, but this is defensive posturing on either side. Who steps forward is the big question. I'm not, I'm not, I'm slightly sad about the fact that they didn't just push the 50 there, right? That seems like maybe some shock call indecision. Um, they were just able to get the hard camp for free. And actually, a fight breaks out. The arrow is going to connect on the back line. That does hit Ana, but that's between on the side. Doing his best to maybe knock Struggy back. Trimmer takes an absurd amount of damage from that cursed bullet. Lots of damage coming out from both sides, but no one has fallen here. Valmar doing his best to push the 50. Does unstoppable the boss stun. Best team with the nano. Jumping ahead, but you know, that's Nano down, that's Mosh Pit down. Mm -hmm. uh, Curse Bullet obviously coming right back up. It was a great arrow there from Hanzo to shut down the re engage. Trimmer just sliding in on Tiger. Combo on Alarak is gonna miss. That's what he's doing his best. He does connect to Juggy, getting knocked back into the side of Team Black Hole, but he's able to walk out as well. Just a zero for zero exchange, other than the fact that you know, now they're 60% ahead in the race. And look at the, here's the thing though they threw Rainer over to this left hand side they see that health going down they're like cool we know you're split in your in your defense so we're gonna be just jumping onto this and as we talked about beforehand the race is a lot better on the side of Archon they're gonna be able to burn on through that and that will be their first first immortal of the game and it will be going into bottom lane I want to point out though the immortals like Battlefield of Eternity it's it's definitely one of those maps where like even though you've lost to keep in top lane if you're managing those catapults you should be fine like you oh, can yeah. still win through these immortal phases the only downfall at this point is it is going to be an immortal push without 16 talent here. 
and that, you kind of, you know, you want to play a little on the back foot, but we were saying in the last game, a lot of these teams are trying to rip these gigantic, oh. massive, entire map arrows from Hanzo, but they're they're fighting Talentiers down constantly as Tremor gets the power slide through. That's going to be a lot of damage onto the Alarak. Um, oh, the Tal... They use the counter strike right there to keep themselves alive. Our defender is going to be used by Liam as well as they're going to try and dive from the back line. There's going to be a subdue out from the Joanna getting that slow onto two players. There's a cleanse out from someone. I swear to God, I heard it as Tiger JK <laughs> is going to be able to dive out and they do find the kill on the Hanzo. Grayman ends up going down. I just so want a screen. I just want a screenshot. Lord. I just want a screenshot and you were just talking about it. Like, can we all look at the top of the screen again? Like, why does it keep happening? Like, why do we continue to fight? down talent tiers like you know it's not gonna work in this case they know they can't win a 5v5 especially considering the talent tier disadvantage looks like weary's gonna be taken out in the wash pit just tanking shots. oh wow, that just gg uh, apparently to them they don't need etc to end the game so they're gonna sacrifice the cow and uh step to core but they still have to defend against a gray man and a hanzo i mean Maybe not I, GG. They're maybe not GG. Up. Yeah. Wow, oh, they're backing up. Okay. All right. I mean, Joanna, Graybane, Hanzo. That is that is a little terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. But it's not like they have a healer or anything. Was the arrow up? The arrow was up. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's just a heartbreak. That bottom fight. They, the arrow from Hanzo from you know the other side of literally the map. downtown. Yeah. Yeah, from downtown just. Connecting on the Ana that then gets blessed shielded that get, then gets immortal stunned and No one gets to her like no one gets on top of her during that window So she just kind of walks away and taps a well like it was a really well timed engage uh, Just poorly executed uh, and, 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 and to be honest like the fact that they didn't like Continue to be like, oh, yeah, we should continue to fight now like our window of winning <laughs> this is definitely no longer there and we're definitely still down to talents here, but like, let's keep fighting. Um, yeah, they're punished. I want to point out. I want to point out really quickly because I'm I'm looking at the Salarak breakdown. They have 160 sadism, so they have reduction by 10% from applied force of seven. They've got 30% from takedowns. Those takedowns, that's max on takedowns. They've got 20% from show of force. That's max on show of force. Pure malice is at 20%. That's when a friendly unit, a friendly member dies. They get 10% sadism from that, and that maxes out at 40. So they can still build 20 more sadism on top of this right now, which is just wild. Like, Alarak can still scale is my big point that I want to hit right now. But this is going to be a race between these two teams, and we're going to see. I, this might be pretty close. Yeah, this is going to be pretty close that's when it crazy. actually comes to the race. That's crazy. Thousand, to think thousand some difference, yeah. How That's how much damage Rainer is doing. Right? Like, he's he's pretty much pulling that by himself, I want to say. Um, but, oh, yeah, they like, should just race. I mean, they should just race. This is, like, exactly the what lane. they want. Shijunki yeah, with a three-man blind to perfect by space. A W connects. He needs to get on top of that. Okay. Uh, well, Rope goes down. Wait a second. They were heckling over here, yeah. Liam did his best and actually just allowed his team to win the Immortal, which is super crucial. Um, this death is going to mean nothing. Uh, down the long run, they should be able to hit 20 and then try to do something from there. Actually, I will say this: there is a benefit to them dying. Mm. Alaric just got 10 more sadism. <laughs> They're at 170. I'm just it saying. I mean, big brain, dude. In, in, a, in a sense, you know, them sacrificing themselves kind of worked out. But because they were clearing top lane, this is pretty much just this is an immortal that goes out, and that's about it. Actually, like, just mega brains. Well, from here too, like you, you have to, you have to think like if they had lost this immortal. That would have given Team Archon a chance to come back. Oh, an arrow actually goes out. Rainer, good job from Carbon there to dodge it. Blush shield, up in eight. Just narrowly missing. Na mm. nar narrow, okay. But yeah. <laughs> but now, you know, because he will, he kind of gave himself up there, uh, they, they, they stopped that potential comeback mechanic of the Immortal. And they're going to have that 20 lead. Uh, so, the, I mean, to be, if I'm them, I, I would just posture towards core. I would just go top lane and start threatening core. I don't think there's really anything that scares me on that attempt and just start fishing for picks and potentially just like getting rain or damage on the core. You have the Ana. The only thing you'd really have to be worried about is like an angled Ponzu arrow. Mm -hmm. But like for the most part, you can just posture as five here and just keep them in their base. And that kind of restricts uh, them from leaving. Okay, on a bird. Oh! 
that I think that <laughs> that deadly, deadly charge. charge just might have hit for like three thousand. Woo! Deadly <laughs> charge came in and said hello to Hanzo. Blessed shield is ripped by the Joan and not connecting. They step towards core. Trying to make this end right now, but they're playing in the back area and a little unsure. The ETC does have Death Mosh, so they're gonna be posturing to, to essentially die here. That does give more statism over. That's gonna be a mosh pit onto one. They're gonna get interrupted. That's gonna be Urel jumping in. Last rights goes oh. in a security. They don't get picked off. That will be Ana going down. So they did find their way into that back line. Without a healer, they're gonna do their best, but that will be Grayman going down. Ana going down also gave more statism Oof. to the Alarak. 180% on that one. They're maxed out right there. And now they step to court. They put themselves up on the board in Black Hole. And Archon are gonna go up 1 1 in our best of five series. GG. Well played. Moving towards game three. I'm. I mean, Nano boosted URL kind of slaps. He just casually, like, three tapped the Stukov there. He jumped on him, W'd him, and jumped on him, and the Stukov died. That was. That was a good game. Like, that was. I was. You know, we started going towards core at. Like nine minutes in, yeah. I was like, really? We're gonna get like a nine minute game? Like, let's drag this out a little bit. And I'm glad they decided to. So, eh, we go up 1 1 on both sides, but uh, I'll figure out who we're gonna or what we're gonna get here for the next game as I need to ask the teams. Looking to see what? if there's anything like irregular about these builds. It's all pretty standard. <laughs> I, I would have liked to see um, Speed Metal at four for ETC. I think that that talent's really good. With the dive coming out from Greymane, Malthiel, and Joanne, in a sense, just her stepping into you, do you think that face melt's worth it just to get them off of you? Or get them I off mean, of someone? Like, in my, like, honest opinion, I, I think that, like, ETC can get people off of people with his W without this talent. Okay. Um, 